William Henry Harrison became the ninth president of the United States after beating incumbent Martin Van Buren in the 1840 election. Tippecanoe and Tyler, too, sailed to victory. Vice President John Tyler became the 10th president of the United States after Harrison died of pneumonia only after a month in office. John Tyler was nicknamed His Accidency because he was the first vice president to be elevated to the office of president by the death of his predecessor. Upon becoming president, Harrison's cabinet thought Tyler should follow Harrison's agenda and only serve as acting president. No such thing. I had my own agenda and nothing was going to stop me, even my own party. Tyler's quick secession was actually one of his biggest achievements. However, Tyler's demand to pursue his own agenda was met by strong resistance by Harrison's cabinet. We wish you had been more of a team player, John. Jeez, we were from the same party. Now let's take a closer look at the main events of the Tyler presidency. A bill resurrecting the Bank of the United States passed in Congress in 1841. The bank was the brainchild of Alexander Hamilton, but was killed by Andrew Jackson in 1836. The Whigs were highly supportive of restoring the bank, but Tyler pushed back hard and vetoed the bill twice. John, I don't know why you wouldn't sign the bank legislation. Your veto was a sign you were not a true Whig. Sorry, Henry. I was opposed to this bill because I didn't believe the federal government had a right to force this type of national bank on the states. Tyler was a strict state rights advocate and thought a national bank was unconstitutional. You were clearly not a team player, so that's why we decided to expel you from the party. Hey, I did stick around as Secretary of State, John. Enraged Whig leaders called Tyler a traitor and expelled him from the party two days later. Sorry, John, but we had to file articles of impeachment against you for misusing your veto powers. I was happy to go it alone and start my own party. Texas declared its independence from Mexico five years before Tyler came to power. Andrew Jackson was a strong advocate of Texas statehood. Mexico considered Texas to be its own. Many northern states were opposed to annexing another slave-owning state, which would have upset the sectional balance in Congress. Not only would Texas be a great addition to the Union, I thought it would help me return from the political abyss. So, Tyler supported a proposed treaty to grant Texas statehood, but unfortunately, this fell apart. I had to avenge my loss to Harrison and Tyler, so I worked my magic to make sure that Texas treaty didn't pass in the Senate. Tyler came up with Plan B. He submitted a joint resolution to Congress that needed only a majority vote in the House and Senate. James Polk, the incoming president, rallied the Democrats in favor of its approval. Nice work, John. You don't mind if I take credit for this, do you? Tyler had some important achievements related to Florida and Canada. Tyler ended the costly, bloody, and inconclusive Second Seminole War in 1842. The Second Seminole War would prove to be the longest and costliest conflict with a Native American group fought by the United States. The successful conclusion of this horrible war paved the way for Florida to be admitted to the Union. The Webster-Ashburton Treaty of 1842 peacefully eased tensions between the United States and British-controlled Canada by resolving several long-standing border disputes and other issues. This was a major achievement as it resolved the U.S.-Canadian border dispute and opened up the Great Lakes for commercial use. I personally negotiated this treaty with British diplomats. Throughout his presidency, Tyler drifted away from the Whig Party and embraced the Council of the South. Could you believe it? My former so-called friends, the Whigs, overrode a presidential veto on my last day in office. Tyler initially ran as a third-party candidate in the 1844 presidential elections, but dropped out to allow James Polk to beat Tyler's Whig menace, Henry Clay. After his presidency, Tyler would be a representative for the Confederacy when the Southern states seceded. In 